I'm the center of it all. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. I'm the center of it all. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. Miracles happen in your name. I salute a voice in praise. It's you that I see.
Your name, your name is victory. 
Jesus is alive. The tomb is empty. Yes. I want everyone to join us to do this song. Jesus is alive. Yes. Hallelujah. of our victory. Our rejoicing today is to declare that death could not hold him captive. Yes. And by the sacrifice Jesus made, he has given us liberty. He has given us deliverance. Yes. We have received forgiveness. Yes. You know, I was just wondering um, if you are following the Bible reading for the year. I, by the time I got to Leviticus and I got to Numbers, yes. I mean, I just felt, thank God Jesus came. I can't imagine going through all those sacrifices. Can you just meditate for a minute 
and think of this goodness of Jesus. God demonstrated in the book of Leviticus, in the book of Numbers, that he doesn't joke with sin. The sacrifice is so cumbersome. The price you have to pay, even for the sin that you committed unintentionally. You know, it made me fear God. Some people complain about God, and God decided that the ground should just open the ground, open itself and swallow them up. And the time again, they came up and said, well, God is killing us and all that. And God said, just give me the time. Let me finish up these people. And immediately plague began to come upon the people. But today, because of the price Jesus has paid, we commit sin and we just go to him and repent and use that same blood that was shed over it, over 2,000 years ago. Yes. And by faith, that is gone. Yes. Have you talked about it? Have you really thought about the salvation? Have you thought about the life that you have? Have you thought about how many sacrifices you will have had to bring to the priest every day for the sin that you commit? But thank God that Jesus paid the price. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, is Sister Jessica ready? She has something to read for us. We have so many things today. But I just want you to relax because the power of the Holy Spirit will minister to us. Yes. And every part of your being will receive life. Amen. And at the end of the service, we end it up with a communion. Yes. And the power of death, the power of sickness, the power of infirmity Amen. shall be completely broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to invite Jessica to come up. And she has something to read to us. Amen. So now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who had fallen asleep. The recommended reading for this passage thing is 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 58, which says, Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet was sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying will rid, will, that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to the Lord, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen. During the Apostle, Apostle Paul's three-year stay in Ephesus, he received word that trouble that trouble was brewing in the church of, at Corinth. Not only was there a disunity and carnality, false, <laughs> false teachers were teaching that there would be no resurrection of the believer's body. This false teaching prompted Paul to write a long discourse on a crucial theological point. The res resurrection of Jesus Christ guarantees that those who belong to him will always be resurrected. In fact, Paul said that the resurrection of Jesus was so important that the Christian's faith is in vain if he is still in the grave. 1 Corinthians 15, 2, 14, and 19. And if Jesus wasn't raised from the dead, we won't be either. But Jesus was raised from the dead and seen by hundreds of witnesses. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 8. Paul pointed out that the resurrection of our body follows follow Christ, each one in his own order. 1 Corinthians 15, 23. As the harvest happens in stage, so will, will the resurrection. 
So as a challenge for the church, on this Easter Sunday, remember to take heart, stand firm. Your labor in the Lord will bear fruit in, you, in eternity. A new earth awaits your resurrected, glorified, eternal, and may I add, beautiful and handsome body. <laughs> and as James S. Stewart states, Christianity is, is essentially a religion of resurrection. Thank you. Sister Jessica for that presentation. Uh, I think it's time for the youths. The youths have something for us this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So this morning the youths have put together a beautiful skit. So we all know the story of Easter, right? Yeah. Who was the villain in the story? Who was the villain in the story of Easter? Judas. Really? Bible scholars. Judas Iscariot was the villain in the story, right? Yes, children, thank you very much. But this morning, we want Judas to tell us his own story. We want to hear the side of Easter from the point of Judas. Praise the Lord. All right, listen and be blessed. Passover is in two days, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Everybody knows the story of Easter through Jesus' side, but no one knows it through my side, the villain's side. This is the story of Easter through Judas Iscariot. I'm so done with that Jesus fellow. He always messes up everything that we pla that the ancestors placed for us. Oh, that's, that's horrible. You know, we should do something about him, you know? Like, like arrest him. But we shouldn't do it during the festival, you know? There's gonna be a riot among the people. Yeah, I agree. What do you think we should do? Whatever you desire, master. <laughs> outside claiming that he knows Jesus. A peasant who knows Jesus? He's I saying? just said that. Okay, I heard you. <laughs> okay. uh, I, I know how to get rid of Jesus, but what will I get in return? Yeah. Oh, 30 oh. pieces of silver. Will that suffice? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. much. You won't regret this. That's up to me to decide. Okay. Get out now. Justify that Judas was a peasant, right? That's what he felt. Let's see what happens next. Truly, 
I tell you, one of it. Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. Not me. It won't be me. Not, Not me. me. Oh, no. Oh, my God. No, no, no. I didn't do anything. The, the person who puts his hand into the bowl and touches my hand will, will, will be the one who betrayed me. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, he cannot know this was me. He must not know Judas. No! Oh my gosh, this can't be happening. He must not know it's me. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh He doesn't know it was me. Oh my gosh, I hope not. Oh, he doesn't know it was me. He doesn't know it was me. No, no. He, he cannot, he cannot. No, no. He can't know it's me. I need your help. I have made a huge mistake. The one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I made a huge mistake. That's not my problem. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Which one is Jesus? How can we tell? Oh, I know it. I know it. Oh, this cannot be happening. I need your help. I need hey, your help. Hey, we're here for Jesus. Nothing else. What's the answer? I need your help. Is this Jesus? Yes. The one I, I'm a woman and I play. Be honest, I have priest assistant. I'm a woman and I play Jesus. I'm Judas. Jesus. I'm a man of world and I play um, Jesus. <laughs>
This morning, I was just thinking if Jesus Christ had decided not to yield to God's plan, what would have become of us? And you know. That reminds me of a, a favorite song that I normally like to sing. Because no matter what height we might attain, no matter how much attainment or achievement that we make in life, no matter how big our service is unto God, everything is built on this foundation that we came to Christ by his invitation yes. and we have access to God. You know what God says? The scripture says, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Yes. So no matter, how, no matter how terrible your sins are, if you come to Christ today and you repent, God has accepted that sacrifice and God has made it easy. And that is why whoever rejects Christ, they will be damned forever. So there is the other coin to eternal life in Christ Jesus. So by the end of the service, or by the time I start ministering the word, which is going to be very brief. If you have not really and actually given your life to Christ, or you've done it before you backslid and you just went away, God wants you back because the power that is in the blood of Jesus can still restore you. If you believe that, say amen. amen. I just want to quickly pray for the youths. Uh, Please, can you call the youths? Let me just pray over them. I know they play the part of Judas and all that, but definitely they are in Christ already. I'm sure you know that. So they will never deny Christ. Amen. Amen. Please, can you call the youths? Let me just pray with them. Please come forward. The youths, come forward. Let me pray with you. You know, they make it so lively, they make it contemporary so that we can get the message. They were not saying, God says the Lord, you know, using those dragons. Amen. Let me just pray with you. Can we all rise on our feet while I pray for them? Father, we just thank you for your grace over the life of these youths. Lord, we thank you for the salvation of their souls. We thank you because they made it simple for us to understand the Judas' version of the crucifixion. Lord, we ask that even this presentation will not stand against them in the name of Jesus Christ. By this laying on of hands, I declare that in the name of Jesus, none of you will deny Christ. None of you will deny Christ. You will not deny Christ. In the name of Jesus, you will not deny Christ. I release the grace of God over your life that each and every one of you will be a shining light for God's kingdom. That the kingdom of darkness will be depopulated because of you. 
and the kingdom of light will be on the increase because you are the shining light. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. Thank you. Amen. Come on, let's welcome one another once again. We are in God's presence. Let's just walk up to someone and just tell him or her Happy Easter. Interestingly, somebody is called Esther, but not Easter. And her birthday is on Easter. Everything is Easter, Esther. And I cannot see Esther, but I can see Easter in all the faces. Amen. Happy Easter. And interestingly, it's our sister's birthday, the choir leader. Esther on the Easter Sunday. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I don't just acknowledge like that. I must have some goodies to eat. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And um, after that, we will have communion. And please, I want to say this ahead of time because we are all aware of what communion is all. And interestingly, the Passover feast of the Jews happens to fall in this weekend, which also coincides with the Easter because many a times we celebrate Easter and maybe the Passover just come a week after or two weeks after. But you know the Passover was instituted right from the beginning when Jesus, when God delivered the children of Israel from Egypt and they had a Passover feast. And Jesus Christ, everything about his plan, everything about his going to the cross was immediately after the Passover. He ate the Passover with them and he said that he will no longer eat this until when he comes in his glory. And it was then he instituted the communion and that communion was to replace the Passover lamb. And Jesus Christ said, even though he hasn't gone to the cross yet. But he said, this is my body. This is my blood. And it's so interesting to know that the scripture says that the lamb that was slain from the beginning of the foundation of the earth. So that means God has his plan right from the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, God gave us a quick hint that there is a need for a lamb because there was a slaughtering of an animal in order for the, for the skin to be used to cover the nakedness of the people, and that was a sacrifice. And Jesus, I mean God, prophesied right from that beginning and he said, the seed of the woman shall bruise the heel of the serpent. And he also said, the serpent also will do his own part. But at the end of the day, we got an insight of God's plan for the salvation of mankind. At times I wonder, what is so special about man? That man can be so rebellious, man can complain, God can do a miracle yesterday and today because another challenge has come, man will still complain. Is it not interesting to you 
that the Bible says while we are still against him, while we are still fighting against him, while we are still rebelling against him, the Bible says while we are yet sinners, Christ did what? Christ died for us. So today, I just want to share with us just one verse because when you look at this weekend of that we celebrate the crucifixion, the resurrection of Christ Jesus, and even before his death, there was a shedding of his blood. And after he shed the blood, he died, he gave up the ghost, he was buried, and he rose again. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ is what makes our faith, our belief in this Jesus, to be valuable, to be special, because Paul says that if all about our faith, about Jesus, is ends up here on earth, then we are meant to be miserable about. But because there is life after death, and even for the children of God, the Bible says they go to sleep. They don't die. Because there is resurrection again. Hallelujah. So let's open our Bible to the book of John chapter 19. Look at verse 30. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. I just want to briefly talk to us about the transforming truth about Calvary. The transforming truth about Calvary. Father, we just thank you for the salvation of our soul. We thank you for the eternal life that we have in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the price that you paid and that you have given us the grace, the joy, the privilege to have access to God the Father, that we can call him our Father. Holy Spirit, we thank you because you are the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Please open our eyes of understanding and let the same power that raised Christ from the dead quicken our mortal bodies, quicken our soul, quicken our spirit man, and quicken our understanding. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's this song that says, When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me my very soul shall shout hallelujah praise God for saving When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my very soul shall shout Jesus and all 
he has done for me. My very soul shall shout hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. Come on, rise on our feet. I want us to take that song one more time. I want you to sing it confidently. If you don't know that song, just sing along. Amen. Amen. That is our testimony. That is our testimony. The greatest gift any man can have in life is to have the salvation of their soul. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my very soul shall shout hallelujah. Jesus Christ said it is finished and the scripture says with that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit When Judas sold Jesus out, not knowing that the children are presented today, the youth are presented today, when they came to arrest him, one of the disciples was angry and he took a, a sword and cut off the ears of someone and Jesus Christ put it back. And he said, If I really need to fight, I have the command of the legions of army to fight for me. And Jesus Christ says that he laid down his life and he can easily take back his life back. He told the disciples, he said, the Son of Man will be crucified. He said, the Son of Man will be killed. And on the third day, he will rise up again. They, didn't want, they were wondering, what is he talking about? It wasn't a pleasant prophecy. It wasn't a pleasant talk. It wasn't a pleasant situation for the disciples. But when it came to pass that Jesus was on the cross, we all know Peter denied and everybody disappeared, everybody went into hiding. We all know about that because they were disappointed. Even Judas was wondering that Jesus will have done something because Jesus has done it before when they arrested him and they were angry at him and they wanted to throw him up. They took him to the pinnacle and to throw him from the top of the mountain and kill him. But as they were about to do that, the Bible says, and Jesus went through them. So Judas knew that even if I sell the master, he will know how to escape, but he didn't know 
that when the time of fulfillment of his assignment comes, he will willingly yield himself because Isaiah 53 prophesied it. He said he surrendered himself like a lamb that was taken to the slaughterhouse. He did not struggle. He did not fight for it. He did not fight against his enemy. The same thing, the picture we had in the time of Abraham and Isaac, when he was meant to slaughter Isaac. Isaac was a teenager, but Isaac did not struggle when his father Abraham, and he said, I can see the knife, I can see the fire, but where is the lamb for sacrifice? And he said, God shall provide the lamb. And Isaac just wondered. The next thing, his hands were tied, and he never struggled. He submitted himself to the Father. The same thing Jesus Christ did. He surrendered his life. He willingly gave himself. So when Jesus was on the cross and people heard him saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. They said, oh, he's calling on Elijah to save him. He has been the savior. He's been healing people. He's been casting out demons. Now let him come down. If you really want to prove to us that you are the son of God, come down from that cross then we will believe. But you know, people in the world will say seeing is believing, but that is wrong. You only believe what you don't see. You believe first, then you now see the manifestation, right? Yes, sir. But they wanted him to come down so that they will believe, said no. But the scripture says, Jesus, he cried out and he said, it is finished. Calvary was victorious. The cross may look like the triumph of evil over goodness. The powerful over the powerless. Because at that moment it looks like Jesus was powerless. Even when they spoke to him to come down, he did not even respond. And they were all waiting and watching to see if he's going to come down. But Jesus never did. So when he cried, it is finished. He wasn't saying, I am finished because he is already look, he looked like a helpless person on the cross. So when they look at him, they say, oh, some people pitied him. But interestingly, thank God for women. Interestingly, Mary and some women were still hanging around in tears. The scripture says, Jesus declared that it is finished. Some Bible translation or interpretation of it is finished means it is completed. So when Jesus Christ said it is finished, he was not saying I am finished. He was not saying I'm frustrated. He was not saying, oh, I am done with, I'm dealt with. No. He said it is finished. That means I have completed the assignment for mankind. I have completed the price that needed to be paid for the people to be delivered. I have completed everything so that people don't offer those sacrifices anymore. And that's why he has been made our high priest. Let me just say three things. In which way Jesus triumphed. Jesus triumphed in three ways. Number one is that he conquered his own human desire to avoid unspeakable suffering. You remember in the garden, he said, Lord, he said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup 
of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Jesus already knew the will of the Father. He has said it several times that the Son of Man will be killed. So he knew the will of God. Do you know at times we know the will of God? We still go back to God again and say, God, is it actually your will? You remember the story of Balaam and Balak? Yes. God told him that you can't cause these children of Israel. I have blessed them. But Balak came to him again and said, please, can you help me do it again? Then he went back to God. And God said, why are you coming back? Okay, go. You want to go? Just go. May the Lord not respond to you when he declares his will before you. And you keep pestering him. And there is a particular answer you are waiting for. And when God is saying, no, this is the answer. But you are trying to see, can I manipulate God? At times you go into fasting in order to change God's mind. You cannot break God. So Jesus Christ, he overcome because remember that even though he's God, but he was in human flesh. So he did not escape the pain of which a normal human being can go through because he is called the son of man. And that was why the last time I was preaching, when the scripture says, God is not a man that he should lie. But then the scripture also says he is a son of man. So he conquered his human desire of trying to avoid that death. The Bible says that the blood, the sweat that was coming from him was the sweat of a blood, of blood coming and gushing out. That means those veins were broken. All these things is to give us an understanding of how deep and how much the love of God is for you and I that he paid those price. For you and I, it will be painful for any man to turn down the gate of God. Number two, I'm trying to give us how Jesus triumphed. Number two, he conquered the demonic powers of darkness. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Yes, sir. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, chapter 2, sorry. I want to read from verse 13. Colossians chapter 3. I keep saying 3, I mean 2. Colossians chapter 2 I'm going to read from verse 13 You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet caught away then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins he cancelled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross So when all that was happening at the cross, people thought it's just an empty thing. But he was nailing our shame. He was nailing our sin on that cross of Calvary. Yes, sir. Paul got the revelation. Paul got the insight. And he began to share it with the Colossians. And said, look, this is what he did. And in verse 15 he said, in this way. That means there is no other way that is acceptable before God but to go through that death, that shameful death on the cross. There is no other way by which man can be saved except there is a sacrifice. And a sacrifice that will work it, that will work, is a sacrifice that will be done once and for all. And Jesus Christ was able to make this sacrifice 
because he is a sinless lamp of God. Even though he was in the flesh, he overcame sin. Never at all has he committed sin. And that is the qualification that he has to pay the price. He went through temptation. The Bible says, try and imagine any temptation that can come across to you as a human being. Just think about it. Jesus Christ went through those temptations. He did. So verse 15 says, in this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and who? And authorities. Who are the spiritual rulers and authorities? He's not talking about those priests in the temple. He's talking about the spiritual rulers. That means the demonic powers, the fallen angels and Satan that was instigating people against Christ, that was instigating and working in rebellion against God, that was tempting men to make man to rebel against God's ordinance. The Bible says that Jesus Christ disarmed them. To disarm means you capture the person and you take the weapon away from his hand. Yes, sir. Mm. Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10. I'm not going to read because of time. It says, David was prophesying about the experience of Jesus Christ in the grave. He said, lift up your head, all ye gates have been lifted up here everlasting doors. And let the King of glory come in. Then those spiritual leaders and powers and dominions and the devil, they all gathered and they were jubilating that Jesus had died. They were rejoicing in hell that we caught him. But when the time came and Jesus Christ said, lift up your hands on ye gates. Yes. I said, who, who are you? Who is that gate? Who are you to tell us? And he said, he said, the king of glory. Then they challenged him again. And he said, the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. So all those times that people are sorrowing, when he was on the cross and he said it's finished, he went down to hell and he began to fight those principalities and powers. And he said, the Bible said, his body cannot suffer corruption because he is the living God. Yes. Jesus said, I lay down my life and I can take it back. Yes, yes, yes. Number three, he conquered the law's stubborn demands against sinners. Christ brought the law to an end so that everyone who believes is put right with God. What Jesus Christ did he replaces the law with his love. And that's why Jesus said, It has been said unto you, Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not do this. And he quoted it. But he said, I say unto you, Love one another. No one can pay the price, no one can fulfill the law. Even when Jesus was healing during the Sabbath day, the scripture said they challenged him, Oh, you are not meant to walk. He said, How many of you will have your goats and lambs? You take them out to go and drink water on the Sabbath day. Is that not work? Yes. He said, What can you compare that? Can you compare that with this person that has been in bondage and is healed and delivered. And he said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. At Calvary, 
love triumph over love forever frame us who could never live up to God's love and Jesus Christ said what it is finished and can I encourage us brethren Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10 has this to say that we just pray and have our communion Romans chapter 10. I'm just going to read from the Good News translation. Because the reason why I'm using that translation, I want it to be spelled very simple so that everybody can just understand. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, If you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him, from death you will be saved that means if you don't believe that God raised him from the dead you will not be saved it's as simple as that and look at verse 10 for it is by our faith that we are put right with God it is by our confession that we are saved so this morning, I just want to bring us all to the table. But before we go to the table and obey one of his instructions that we should do this in remembrance of him, I want us all to rise on our feet, please. I want us to rise on our feet. I want us to bow our heads in prayers. I think it's a good time for us to thank God and to appreciate Him. Because when Jesus disarmed those spiritual authorities, those spiritual powers, He gave us that authority that in the name of Jesus, whatever we bind here on earth will be bound in heaven. He did not just disarm them for joke. He disarmed them on our behalf. So that you can use the same authority in his name. But before we continue to pray, please, as we bow down our heads, is there anyone here that you are not sure of your salvation? You are not actually sure that if death should come today, you will make heaven. If you don't have that assurance, I can pray with you this morning. And all you need to do is to make this simple confession and invite him again into your life and believe that God raised him from the dead. And you confess with your mouth that he is your savior and is your Lord. You know, the scripture has made it so simple. There is no complication about salvation. You don't have to fast in order to be saved. All you need to do is to make this confession by faith and you mean it from your heart. And that is what makes you a child of God. You don't have to fast. You don't have to pay a price. You don't have to bring a big offering. No. Salvation is cheap, but it's costly. If somebody had to pay a price for it. Please write down your head. Is anyone here that wants to... Maybe you know you gave your life to Christ, but you actually passed it. Please, I don't want any chatting. No chatting, please. I want everybody to be focused. Is there anyone here that you are not sure of your salvation? Or you have not made a decision yet, but you want to do that today? Can you raise up your hand wherever you are? And I will pray with you and lead you into a prayer of salvation. And it's going to be a wonderful day for you to know Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Is there anyone like that here? I just want to give you two more seconds just to raise your hand. 
there's nothing to be ashamed about. Because if you want to please man, and you don't want people to look down on you, or, oh, we thought, we thought you are born again, so you mean you have not done it all this while, and for that reason, you are withholding your hand. Uh, that will not pay you at all. So please, if you want to make a declaration before the Lord, just raise your hand where you are, and I will pray with you. Okay, so that means every one of us are sure of our salvation. Okay, let's bow down and pray. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the price that you paid. Thank you for giving us eternal life. Lord, we thank you that we can rejoice because you have paid it all. Lord, we ask for the help of the Holy Spirit and the grace to walk worthy of you, to please you. Lord, that our life will be a shining light so that those in the dark will see your light in us and they will come to Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father. And Lord, we declare this wine and this bread, we declare it blessed that as we remember the price that Jesus paid, that we all receive the benefits, the boldness, the victory of Calvary. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sister Shalako. You died in war. You died. 
Matthew chapter 26 verse 26 to 28 and as they were eating Jesus took bread blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take it this is my body then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Another version will say for the remission of sins. So, Father, we just come before your throne. We come to the table, Lord, to acknowledge your body that was broken for us we thank you lord because you made a sacrifice you said we should do this in remembrance of you and so father we thank you because you bore our sorrows the chastisement of our peace was upon you and by the stripes you receive on your body we are healed Therefore, we activate the blessings of healing. We activate the power of healing Amen. over everyone that partake of this bread. Any form of disease, any form of infirmity, we command them to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That as we take this bread, that signify his body that was broken. That the life of God will be transmitted to our cells, our body, and every cell and system of our body. And we speak life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Any part of our body that is dying, we call it to come alive. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may eat the bread. Jesus also made the proclamation. He said, this is my blood of the new covenant. That means the old covenant is done away with. The covenant of the law does not have dominion because he said, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The blood of Jesus is what brings our connection with God again. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But by the same blood of Jesus, we overcome every satanic attack. Every thought and imaginations are held captive by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. And so Lord, we ask that as we take this wine that signifies your blood, 
the blood of Jesus will make us whole. Amen. The power that is in the blood of Jesus will destroy the yoke, every cause, every divination, every enchantment, everything that was written against us, they are canceled by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, you may drink. Lord, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the sacrifice. We give you praise and honor, Lord. Lord, I make a declaration over everyone that is here this morning, including the children, the youths, the adults, the male and the female, that the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken every part of you that your life will be a shining light in the name of Jesus Christ. That as from this day, you will begin to walk in victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I declare that all ailments and infirmity, they are gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Because it's not by power, it's not by might. But because Jesus has paid the price, we lay hold on that sacrifice. And we claim it. We claim those benefits of the cross. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. God bless you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to call on my mother again. Let's encourage you, brother. Praise God. That is weak. Praise God. Are we excited to be in the house this morning? All right, it's time to give our offering to appreciate God for what he has done for us. Appreciating him for giving his life for the remission of our sins. So let's put together our offering and our tithe. If you are giving your tithe, Kindly note it at the back of the envelope, put your name uh, for proper uh, documentation. And if you are done, let's be on our feet as we bless it, then we can have the choir. Let's put together our offering and our tithe and be on our feet as we bless the offering. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for a grace to be in your presence this morning. We thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to be a living soul. Lord, we say glory be unto you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today, you rose from the dead. And we pray this morning, every dead thing in our life, we declare it to rise again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your word says in the book of Isaiah 43 verse 19, you said you will make a way for us even in wilderness. Amen. We ask that you make a way for us in every difficulty in the name of Jesus. Amen. You said you will make rivers even in desert. That, that seems that every impossibility shall be made possible today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as we go this week, let your blessings go with us. Amen. Let your grace go with us. Amen. In Luke chapter 2, 52, it says that and Jesus grew in wisdom, he grew in favor with God and with men. Yes. We say as we go, in, as we are in favor with you today, we shall be in favor with men in the name of Jesus. Amen. Unmerited favor will come our way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your blessings will locate us anywhere we go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, mighty Father. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen. Amen.
21st of April 2019, Easter Sunday, and I have with me the pastor of Regent Christian Church of God, Vine Chapel, and he'll be sharing his thoughts with us as regards Easter briefly. Good day, sir. Good day. Happy Easter to you. Same to you, sir. Thank you so much. So, sir, I would like you, you to just uh, briefly just explain to us how uh, the importance of Easter to the Christian race, basically. Uh, the importance of Easter to the Christian body is actually about victory. It's about victory from the power of sin and victory over the power of darkness. So to me, it's a celebration of victory that Christ has given to us by the price that he paid on the cross and the fact that he resurrected that is our victory. That spells victory for every believer and is also for everyone that is willing to accept this offer. Thank you very much, sir. So, sir, very quickly, what will be your Easter message to the Christians right here in Vine Chapel and to every Christian out there? Well, my message for Christians, especially in Vine Chapel, RCCG Vine Chapel, is that we should walk in victory. We should walk in the continuous understanding of the covenant that we have with Christ because Christ has given us that covenant of victory. So we are meant to go out and shine. The, you know, the victory that we have as Christians in Vine Chapel is not meant for the church walls, it's for us to shine in the world. And for the body of Christ at large, it is time for us to begin to walk in that victory. You know, we appropriate that victory that we have in Christ Jesus, so that with that victory that demonstrates God's love, we should go out there as believers to demonstrate the love of God. And by this, we bring people out of darkness into the kingdom of light that is the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Thank really you so much. You, sir. I'm delighted. Thank yes. you so much. So, so we've been informed that uh, the Easter celebration is the singular most important event in the life of the Christian. I pray that we'll live in this reality as we go forth in this celebration in Jesus. So very much in the Easter celebration, I have uh, with me a man of God who will be sharing his Easter thoughts once again with us. I've been celebration galore here at RCCG Vine Chapel, Jackson, Mississippi. And it's my pleasure to have uh, bro Samson Zeno with me once again. Thank you very much for coming, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Easter. So very quickly, sir, uh, it's been celebration galore here, celebration in many places of worship today. What is the purpose of why are we celebrating today? Wow, well, it's worth celebrating and um, the Easter Sunday is a Sunday that we remember and commemorate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are here celebrating his resurrection. If we remember on Good Friday, we had uh, two, three days ago that he died on the cross and he rose again. As a matter of fact, that is the foundation of our Christianity. Jesus rising from the grave and he declares to us he is the resurrection and life. So we are celebrating because he is risen and he's resurrecting every one of us. Okay, sir, thank you very much, sir. Uh, very quickly, if uh, you give an Easter message to members of Vine Chapel here and to the body of Christ at large, what would be that Easter message at this time, sir? Oh, my message to the member of Vine Chapel and uh, the body of Christ is for us to dwell on the finished work of Christ, the finished work on cross. When Jesus died, he said, it is finished. And when he rose up, he, he said, all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. So therefore go and have dominion. Know that God has sent his son to die for you and Jesus Christ has finished every work and he has resurrected and bring you glory so therefore this easter period is a period for every child of god to celebrate and to walk in the resurrection power of christ thank you very much sir thank you so much yeah i believe the key word here is it is finished jesus christ on the cross has been able to finish every problem that we may seem to have or that we may have at the moment i pray we walk in this dominion in the name of jesus once again, uh, today is Easter Sunday and we are in the mood of celebration, celebrating the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. I have a very important member of our church here, RCCG Vine Chapel, Mississippi, Jackson, and he'll be 
and telling us or enlightening us a bit more about the Easter celebration. So I'm very happy to have you. Um, very quickly, we are so happy. Celebration not just here, everywhere we have celebrations about Easter. Why are Christian folks so happy about Easter? Yeah, basically, if Jesus Christ never rose, there will be no Christianity. And because Jesus Christ died on a Friday and rose on a Sunday, it tells us and gives us the hope that we as well we one day arise. And so because of the significance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that is why we have Christianity today. And that's why we are gathered today to celebrate um, the resurrection Easter. of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So sir, what would be your Easter message to Vine Chapel members and to every member of the Christian fold today? Yeah, basically to everyone that is watching this uh, um, interview, I believe that um, uh, my message for you is that Christ on the cross has said it is finished. Mm. And when he it says it's finished, it means all our troubles, all our challenges are finished. Now, does it mean that it is finished like it disappears? It, boy, God, Jesus Christ will always be in, in our situations with us. He will, he, will, he will go through it with us. He will be in it with us. And we are assured of, of victory. Because Jesus Christ himself said he, he laid his life and he picked it up by, his, by, his, by himself. If he did not lay down his life, nobody could have killed him. But because of the dictates of the Father, he obliged. And so because of that... What are my message is that every trouble, everything that has been a challenge in our life as Christians, God has assured us of victory. Victory. That irrespective of what we go through, He will we surely have victory and we will rise again. Thank you so much, sir. The key word here is the victory. We have victory over every circumstance that we, may, that we may encounter. And that is the spirit of Easter. Once again, happy Easter to you all. God bless you. Oh